When I first saw this game between Magnus Carlsen and Hans Niemann at the FTX Crypto Cup, I didn't think much of it. Magnus Carlsen makes a very odd first move. But now, after all the controversy that happened later at the Sinkfield Cup, where it appears, at least indirectly, that Magnus has accused Hans Niemann of cheating, this game takes on a, a new meaning, I think. And I wonder why Magnus Carlsen began the game with A3. Let's take a look. Again, this is from the FTX Crypto Cup. Magnus has white, Hans Niemann has black, and he, this is actually the 13th most common move played in this position. So Magnus is definitely trying to steer Hans Niemann out of his comfort zone right from the start. d5 is Hans' reply, d4, knight f6, knight f3, bishop f5, and basically Hans Niemann is playing a London system in reverse. He's trying to say, well, that a3 move just kind of gave me the, the pieces as if I was white, and I'll just play and try to make the a3 move look unnecessary. c4, c6, knight c3, and e6. And you can see again, it's just like a London system, but with the black pieces, this is a light squared strategy. Magnus goes after the bishop at f5, knight to h4, and here we already have a novelty, a bishop to g4. This game, by the way, was 15 minutes for each side with a 10 second uh, increment, it's rapid. And Hans Niemann avoids the loss of a bishop before the bishop had just tucked back to g6, allowing itself to be captured. Bishop g4, and now f3. Hitting that bishop, the bishop retreats to h5, pawn takes, and here Hans Niemann retakes with the c-pawn. So we have a symmetrical structure, as like, kind of like a semi-slav uh, system. Oh, not a semi-slav, an ex slav exchange variation, excuse me. And, uh, but this is kind of awkward for white. Um, this f3 move is, is kind of ugly, and the knight on the side of the board isn't uh, very well placed. So g3 is played to activate this knight, knight g2, knight to f4, knight c6, knight g2, queen to b6, and e3. And it's pretty clear that Hans Niemann has won the opening battle. Um, he's got a nice development, and this pawn structure is really rickety and unstable. Uh, so Hans Niemann has done well out of the opening. Bishop goes to d6, the knight goes to f4, hitting that bishop at h5. The bishop goes back to g6. Perhaps a better idea was bishop f4, gf4, and then this ridiculous move. <laughs> if, he, if he was using a computer, he might have seen this idea. Uh, knight to e4, uh, taking advantage of the fact that this pawn on f3 is pinned, and basically the idea is Black just takes on c3, puts the bishop on g6, and he's in great shape. Uh, instead, he plays more the more human move, bishop to g6, allowing the bishop to be exchanged, knight takes. And then at this moment, he's threatening bishop takes g3 with check, and the pawn wouldn't be able to recapture because the rook on h1 would hang. So he has to play king to f2, Carlson defends that g3 pawn. a6, king to g2, and now castling g4. So this is a risky decision from Carlson uh, to advance these pawns in front of his king on g2. We'll see if he can handle the instability of his position here. e5 was played by Hans Niemann, a good response. As we know, in chess, the best response to an attack on the side of the board is to counterattack through the center of the board, and that's what Hans Niemann does here. g5 is played, and here it would be a mistake for Hans Niemann to just play knight to d7. Uh, running away from that pawn, and after pawn takes bishop e5, knight takes d5. Here, white has a pretty nice position. This knight on d5 is strong, gaining a tempo against the queen at b6. So instead, what he does is he plays e d4. That counterattacks the uh, knight on c3, and that way he doesn't have to go into that variation. e d4, and now knight to h5. And he's putting a lot of pressure on this vulnerable weak f4 square. This would be a great place to settle a knight if he could exchange off these dark square bishops put a knight on f4, Magnus can be in big trouble. Knight takes d5, queen takes d4, they exchange central pawns, queen d4, knight d4. Now, black has a good position. Uh, he's threatening to get rid of white's two bishops. That's the one thing white has going for him, are the two bishops. But he's threatening knight to b3, which would eliminate the bishop at c1. And uh, black has a safer king, and uh, he's in good, good shape here. A rook to b1 takes away the threat of knight to b3. Now rook f to d8, creating x-ray pressure against the knight on d5. Bishop to d3, so the bishop can play to e4 and defend that knight if need be. Now rook a to c8. Now there was a little bit better idea here 
uh, from Hans Niemann. He could have played bishop to e5, and what that does is it reveals the rook's attack on the knight. And if bishop to e4, Hans Niemann could play knight to e2. And the idea is he's threatening to take with the rook, and then after the bishop recaptures, play the knight to f4, and fork the king and the bishop. It's basically the idea. Um, so that bishop to e5 would have probably been a little bit stronger. He plays rook a to c8, rook to d1, knight to e6. Aherons Niemann would like to play rook to c5, attack the knight, and then double up on that c file. Bishop to e4, king to f8, bishop to d2. So he can come into a5, irritate this rook on d8. And you can see Carlson is beginning to get some stability in the position. The queens are off the board. He, he's developed. He still has the two bishops. So he seems to be slowly outplaying Hans Niemann after a bad opening. Knight h to f4 check. Knight f4, knight f4 check. And king to f1. And Magnus has survived the early pressure. And now he uses the two bishops to fight back. B6 is played. Obviously, he's threatening to take on B7. But after B6 is played, then bishop to B7. Just a double attack on the rook at C8. The pawn at A6. Rook to B8. Bishop takes A6. So now he's got some material uh, for the two bishops that he had. So he's beginning to do even better. Knight to E6. Bishop to C4. Knight goes to D4. Threatening the pawn at F3. But also the pawn at H2 is threatened. In fact, in this position, bishop takes h2 immediately was probably the better idea. The knight to king to g2 defends both pawns. Rook b to c8, bishop to a6, again irritating the rook. Rook to c7, and now bishop to c3, hitting the knight. The knight goes back to e6, attacking the g5 pawn. Now here, Magnus plays a4. Perhaps h4, defending the pawn, was the better choice. And in this position, after a4, Hans Niemann probably should have gone ahead and grabbed that pawn. And after, say, rook to d2, you just play the knight back to, uh, to e6, and you're fine. Instead, he plays the king to e7, now h4. Magnus doesn't give him a second chance to take that g5 pawn. Knight to f4, check. Uh, rook to h8, hitting the h4 pawn was another good idea. Knight to f4, check. King to f2, knight e6, bishop to b5. And this bishop pair is very nice. They are really beginning to show uh, their power. Rook to h8 hits the pawn. Rook to h1 defends it. Bishop to c5 check. King to g3. And now we have a period of maneuvering and some checking. Knight to f4, kind of dancing around a little bit with the time control. Rook b to e1 pins the knight on e6. And that means that Magnus is threatening to take on g7. The knight could not recapture because it is pinned. Bishop to d6 check. King g2. And now f6. So Hans Niemann has dealt with the threat to the g7 pawn, but now this knight on e6 no longer has a defender, and it is pinned, so it's tactically vulnerable. Uh, Carlson plays rook to e4 with the idea of playing rook h to e1, doubling up and winning the knight at e6. Hans Niemann plays f5, hitting the rook. Now the rook goes to c4, trading itself off. Knight to f4 check, king to f2. And here, Hans Niemann probably should have uh, taken on c4. And uh, in this position, he can keep fighting a, a little bit. Uh, but instead, he plays the bishop to c5 with check. And in this position, uh, Carlson plays a really beautiful move. You see his idea? That's right, he plays rook, takes c5, check. And if Hans Niemann uh, takes with the pawn, trying to keep the exchange, then after bishop to g7... These bishops completely control the board, so that even though you know he's got a, a little material for the rook, uh, white is totally winning this position. In fact, this is like plus four in, to a computer. So Hans Niemann does not do that. Instead, he takes with the rook, but that allows, of course, Magnus to regain the exchange by pinning the rook. Knight to e6, bishop c5, check, knight takes c5. And he doesn't have the two bishops anymore, but he's simplified the endgame. And now this pawn majority on the queen side will be very hard to stop. b4, advancing with tempo, knight e6, bishop to c4. Again, the idea of rook to e1 and picking up the pinned knight. Knight to d4 here, rook to c8. The idea maybe he can defend, probably the better idea. Knight to d4, rook to e1, check, king to d6, rook to d1. 
pins the knight to the king, so it plays king to e5. Now f4 check, king to e4. And here Carlson missed a really incredible idea. He could have played king to g3. And that puts this king in the bo in a box where Carlson is threatening rook to e1. And the king would have nowhere to go. It would be completely boxed in. The only way to get out of check would be to play knight to e2 and then just rook takes knight and he would win it. So let's say he played king to e3, then rook to d3, king to e4, rook to c3. And here the threat of bishop to f1, g2 checkmate is on the board. And after bishop to f1, that would give white time to play the rook to c7 and be completely winning. Uh, but instead of king to g3, Carlson plays bishop to f1 in this position. King goes to d5, a5, pawn takes, pawn takes, rook to b8, Advancing the pass pawn, and now it is defended by the bishop at f1. King to c5, rook to c1 check, king to d6, and now king to e3 was played. If uh, a7, rook to a8, king to e3, knight c6, rook takes bishop, oh, excuse me, rook takes knight was one of his options, and then bishop to g2 check, picking up that rook and winning the game. So a7 would have been a strong idea here. Carlson plays the king to e3, the knight goes to c6, and what Hans Niemann wants to do is create a blockade with the knight, but he can also play the rook to b3 and then to a3. You know, we want our rooks to be behind past pawns. So to prevent that from happening, Magnus plays the rook to c3, controlling this b3 square. The knight goes to a7, now bishop to c4. Carlson is threatening bishop to f7 and grabbing the g6 pawn. So rook to e8 check, king f3, and rook to e7. That helps hold the blockade on a7 and keeps the bishop out of f7. Rook to e3, offering the exchange of rooks. And if rooks come off the board, this is a very easy win for white. The bishop versus knight is a zero effort win for white. So he plays the rook to d7, avoiding the exchange. But Magnus plays rook to d3 check. And after king to c7, the rooks come off the board. Bishop goes to f7 and... Uh, that's basically all she wrote. King c6 and a few moves follow. And now this h-pawn cannot be stopped. That's way too fast. And the game was over. So these two players, have ha they have a history. Carlson played a3, which makes me kind of suspicious. Hans Niemann was definitely not using a computer in this game. As we saw, he missed a lot of good computer ideas. Uh, if you want to see another game between Magnus and Hans Niemann, by the way, be sure to check out this video. This one doesn't turn out like you might expect. I think you'll enjoy it. See you again soon.